Hi there, this is Christiane Marie Landry here again with another Media Hub tutorial. So I'm going to show you today some audio editing basics using a program called Audacity, which is open source and available on our, all our computers in the library. So I'm going to show you how to do is to record some audio into Audacity using a microphone and whatever audio interfaces, and then edit that audio and finally export it. So let's take a look. So for this tutorial, we're going to use some of the Media Hub loanable equipment to record some audio. So we have an XLR cable, a microphone, a microphone stand, and then also a pop filter. To assemble this, you'll want to first take the XLR cable and find the side that has a little clip on it. This you'll plug into the back of the microphone, aligning the three pins. Once it's plugged in, then you can slide it into the microphone stand. And then you'll attach the pop filter, which reduces P sounds known as plosives. This will just help with the recording quality a little bit. Once you're set, it should look like this. You have the microphone in the stand with the cable connected, the pop filter arm connected to the microphone stand by the screw on the bottom, and then the pop filter in front of the microphone. All right, so now let's plug in the microphone into one of our audio interfaces. Now an audio interface might be a new concept to some of you. What this unit does is it transfers analog audio, say your voice, into a digital signal which a computer can then manipulate. So it's one way of interacting and making music with a computer. So let's connect our microphone to the audio interface. First, locate the first input on the audio interface. Next, you'll want to take your XLR cable and align the pins with the configuration on the audio interface. Should be the three pins pointing down. Once you have it plugged in, you can test out the audio levels by checking the gain knob over here on the left. And if it turns green, testing one, two, testing one, two, just like it did there, that means that the audio is being registered by the audio interface and it's at a good level. Now over here on the right is your monitor dial and also your headphone levels. Those two knobs set your playback volume, either through speakers or through headphones. Now see, if the gain knob turns red, that means that you're clipping. It means you're recording at too high of a level and you want to turn the gain down. And you might have to mess with the gain a little bit before you get a good level for your audio. All right, now that you have a recording set up already, let's open up Audacity and we can record a track. All right, so now that we have Audacity open, let me go over some of the features in here. Up at the top, you'll see a drop-down menu that might say built-in microphone. This is your input. And so I'm going to switch this over to the Scarlet 2i2, which is our audio interface. And you can decide whether you want to record in mono or stereo, but for now I'm going to keep it as mono. Just above those drop-down menus are your input and also your output audio levels, which are currently being controlled by your audio interface. And then over here to your left are your transport controls. So you have record, pause, play, stop, skip to beginning a track, and skip to the end. Just to the right of your transport controls are tools for editing, and then immediately to the right of those are your audio level meters for your output and also your input. There are additional audio editing tools on the right, and then also your timeline at the very top, which shows at what point in the track you are. All right, so let's go ahead and record. So I'm gonna hit the record button and start speaking. All right, so I'm just gonna do a really quick test recording. As you can see, the audio from the Focusrite Scarlet 2i2 is going into the computer and Audacity is registering it. Um, so I'll just record this for a few more seconds. As you noticed, I did just clip there a little bit um, or came very close to clipping. I'm gonna try and edit that out in a minute and I'll show you also how to trim down this clip. All right, so that should be enough for now. I'll go over and hit stop. And now we have our first track. So let's play it back for a minute. I'm going to hit space bar, which will play right, it. So I'm just going to do a really quick test recording. As you can see, the audio from the... And as you can see at the top, there are the green audio levels showing that the audio is playing back. And ideally, the audio should fall somewhere between the negative 12 and the zero decibel range. Or came very close to clipping. We can try and edit that out in a minute, and I'll show you also how to trim down this clip. All right, so that should be enough for now. I'll go over and hit stop. All right, and that's the end of our first track. So now let's take a look by going back to the beginning. I'm going to click on skip to the beginning. 
And we're going to edit out this little bit of silence here just so we can have the audio start right at the beginning of the track. So I'm going to make sure the select tool is selected and then I'm going to click and drag to select the area we want to remove. And then I'll hit delete and I'll get rid of it and we can play it back. All right, so I'm so as you could hear that silence is no longer at the beginning of the track, just like we wanted. So what we're going to do next is take a look at ways you can adjust the audio levels in your recording. As I mentioned before, your ideal recording level is somewhere between negative 12 decibels and zero decibels. Anything higher than zero, you're going to clip, which means your audio is going to be distorted. So let's take a look at that spot that I thought I might have clipped. So I'm going to place the cursor just before that and hit play. So, I'll just record this so what you'll notice is that it didn't actually clip. It just hit at zero. But what that means is the rest of our track is going to be a lot quieter than that one part. And sometimes that's fine. But in other cases, you want to have a more normalized, uniform track. And so I'm going to show you how to do normalization and compression. All right, so I'm going to move the mouse over to the left and click on the track itself, which will highlight it, meaning I have it selected. And then I'm going to go up to the Effect drop-down menu and select Amplify. Now what Amplify does is it allows you to edit the volume of the entire track, which is great for some purposes, but not for what we're looking to do, which is to drop down the volume of that one peak and then raise the level of the other so that's a little more consistent. So we'll close that out for now, and I'm going to go back up to Effect, and this time I'm going to select Compressor. All right, so I'm going to adjust some of the settings within Compressor, um, particularly the threshold and the noise floor. And so what this will ultimately do is normalize the audio over the recording in a way that makes it more consistent. If you want, you can preview it, but in this case, I'm just going to say OK and apply it. So as you can see from the waveform, we still have that one peak, but at least now the volume is a little bit more consistent across the track. Um, so I'll just record this for a few more seconds. As you noticed, so I, I think we are ready to export our audio. So let's take a look on how do you do that. So from the file drop-down menu, there are two export options, export and export selection. Right now we're just going to do export. I'm going to give it a name, just a test audio for now. And I'm going to save it to the desktop as a WAV file for now, which is uncompressed. You can also save it as MP3, but you have to download an encoder for Audacity. So we'll say save. And it'll ask you if you want to add any metadata. I'm not going to worry about that. Say OK. And your audio should appear on the desktop, and we can listen to it back. All right, so I'm just going to do a really quick test. All right, so we're hearing it play back now. It seems to work just fine. And that's our first track recorded with Audacity. It is going to take All right, so that's it. If you want to check out any of our other tutorials, they're included at the link below. And if you have any questions, you can always contact us at dps at providence.edu or at asklibrarian at lists.providence.edu. Okay, until next time, I'm Christiane Marie Landry, signing off.